Hi, my name's Glenn and welcome to my next project. This is a crossover project from my boat project. A few years ago, I bought an old sailboat and the inside, all the wood was rotten. So I gutted it, totally stripped everything out of there and now I have to rebuild all the furniture. So I'm doing it out of quarter inch plywood and the reason I'm doing a crossover episode here is because I'm attempting to bend plywood. I have never bent wood before intentionally, and this is going to be a new experience for me. Well, I'm done. My first experience with wood bending, um, plywood bending specifically, is done. The trough worked really well. My jig, whatever you call it, my contraption worked really well. Um, it's really funny how um, I can plan things out in my head, go through it, I'll do a whole run through in my head, visualize it all, even write out some things of how I want it to be done. But then when it actually comes to it, there's some changes that are made. Now, not many, but um, one thing that was a big one was that I was able to bend both pieces of wood at the same time, where in my head, I thought I was going to be doing one, and after it sat up, then I would do the next one the next day or the day after that, whenever the first one was ready. I don't know why I didn't think of doing them both. All I had to do is make sure they were flipped opposite ways. So the front is at the same place and all right, things are coming along nicely. It's going at least as well as I hoped. All right, well, I've changed my mind. This is the wood that I spent bending yesterday and it went back to flat pretty darn easily. I put some weight on it just to hold it in place. I am going to increase the bend. I'm going to shorten the, shorten the distance that it bends those 10 inches. It was taking two feet to go from here down 10 inches to here. Now I want to do that in half that distance, so one foot. I think that would give me a little more cabin room. And in order to facilitate that bend a little more easily without the wood splitting or cracking and peeling off, uh, I'm going to cut the grooves, those channels in the back side of it. And the grooves will go all the way down to either halfway or maybe down to the last ply, I'm not sure. Um, so hopefully that works. I do have some more wood, so if I totally mess it up, I can start over again. So we'll see. It's all in the sake of learning, but at the same time, it's also um, trying to get what I want. This is my second attempt at bending plywood. I shortened up the transition over the 10 inches from two feet to only one foot. I tried to make the bend a little more gradual, but it was still too sharp. All right, I'm analyzing my work, my attempt at bending plywood. Now, my first time, I gave it more of a broad 
bend. However, you can see here the sharp angle. Um, so it's all the bend is right here. Now my assumption was that by cutting these grooves, it would itself bend at a more gradual angle because I wasn't pushing on it here. I only had a wood piece of wood clamped here and of course stabilizing it here. But this area did not bend at all until it was forced to bend. It tore this up. Well, it, it broke and I'm gonna leave it. It's not gonna be perfect. It'll show a blemish, but it will be okay. I'm gonna fill these grooves in with thickened epoxy. I'm going to epoxy the entire thing, uh, one or two coats to make it waterproof. And then I will simply sand this down and it will show a blemish there but that's all right, I'm, I'm done trying it. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I did learn a lot. So the learning here is that I need to force a less steep of a bend, um, a more gradual bend. I need to force that because the plywood will not conform itself. And you can really tell on this one how, how sharp that is and how much it puckered the inside of the plywood. That is a mess. In reality, that can all be sanded smooth, but over here where it's white, that's where the epoxy touched some water. So there was still some moisture in the wood and that definitely sacrifices the integrity. I, I, I can't live with this. I'm getting rid of it. I'm gonna salvage the flat piece of wood, but I'm cutting off this bend and I will start over again. I am also going to shorten my jig by two and a half inches because after I made that bent plywood and I got it out on my um, ground and looked at it and measured it, I saw that it was 12 and a half inches instead of 10 inches. And this is the thickened epoxy I'm using to fill in all the cuts. It's so much like frosting, it's, I kept wanting to taste it. So I'll cover this with parchment paper and then I can put the second sheet over the top and repeat the entire process. And apply the forms to hold it down. Now I did have some epoxy that didn't cure very well. I think I did not mix it one for one. So now I got my food scale out there and I'm going by weight. And I'm making penetrating epoxy by thinning it with mech. Now I learned afterwards from the people that make the epoxy that you should not thin your epoxy with mech. They said acetone. I used methyl ethyl ketone because it does not flash off as quickly. Um, they said only thin penetrating epoxy and only use acetone. Okay, now that I have my plywood bent, it's time to put my, um, I'm not sure what to call it, a reinforcing board. I have a one by two inch piece of wood. I'm going to put at the top of all of my um, vertical plywood. That's going to give more surface area for the top piece to land on. Here I am laying a coat of epoxy on the wood so the thickened epoxy will adhere better. I'm thickening my epoxy with colloidal silica. So you really need to wear a dust mask or better because this stuff gets in the air super easily and you don't want to breathe it. But it is fun to stir. It's a lot like powdered snow, really cold, dry powdered snow. I'm putting the thickened epoxy into a Ziploc bag and then I'll cut off the corner and it'll be a lot like a frosting pipette. It's a much easier way to lay this stuff out, which is the consistency of frosting, than scooping it and smearing.
I'm using these nails to help the wood stay in shape while I put the reinforcing piece on the top. I'm dry fitting it to see how it fits and uh, oh, look at that big gap. What am I gonna do there? I'm making a stencil out of a thin piece of cardboard which I will use to cut out a piece of wood in approximately the correct shape to fit in that open gap. And there's my little triangle, but it needs lots of fine tuning before it will fit in the gap properly. Once I got it to fit freely, I buttered it up and inserted it in that gap. found a bubble level on top of my belt sander worked really well for leveling off the wood I just glued on top of my plywood. And so that way I'm going to have a pretty level surface for the benches to sit on. That worked really well. Bam! Now to put a three degree cut in it so it will mate with the inside of the cockpit well. I have put on two coats of thinned epoxy and now I'm putting on two coats of varnish. And there it is. It looks pretty good. All right, I did it. I finished my plywood bending project, experiment, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I'm satisfied with it. I'm happy with it. And I, um, I find it interesting that, you know, my very first iteration was pretty much as good as my last one. <laughs> but I didn't know that the fir at first, right? I thought I could improve it. So I tried and tried again. Um, and, you know, now I, I learned some things from that. Had I stopped at my first one and said, eh, that's good enough, I wouldn't have realized that you can't bend with the grain. I had thought of, after I discovered that, I thought of doing it again and putting the grain vertically so it would bend this way rather than this way and try to, you know, snake around. That's why the grain broke off and stuck out so much because I had the grain angled the wrong way. So I could have either had just the bend be vertical or I could have done the entire length vertical, but I didn't wanna redo it. I didn't discover that until I was done with my third one, the one I'm finally gonna keep. So it's fine. I learned a lot here. Uh, I'm not trying to make a pristine showboat. I want it to be as nice as it can be, but to what cost, right? So I have to kind of limit my time and, you know, expenses at some point. So what else did I learn? Oh, this one I, I have no excuse for. The jig was two and a half inches too high. Now I can look back and realize why that happened. Um, but the bottom line was I wasn't paying enough attention. I didn't measure again. So I measured initially and cut things. But then once I put them in place. I didn't measure to be sure I was right. I ride a lot on assumptions is what I'm discovering. And, you know, you can get by pretty well through life with assumptions, but there are definite times when you need to check and double check and even triple check. So the, th the stuff I'm doing in here is what needs to be checked more and more often especially when we're dealing with creating a jig that's going to matter with the thing that you're making. All right, what else did I learn? I think that's about it as far as my summary of final learning. Uh, the water worked well. 
but you don't want to soak it too long because then the plies start separating. So I was trying to manage that. And the very first one did kind of separate a little bit because it soaked too long. So I, I didn't soak the wood as long after that. All right, that is all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. And I will keep you updated on my progress on my boat project, Aquarius. You can subscribe and then you will know when my next episode comes out because I am highly irregular. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.